I firmly believe that Australia has one of the some of the best agri-tech on the planet, but we need to have belief in that, um, and the belief in that will bring uh, better policy, better focus, and it'll bring more investment dollars because um, investment in agri-tech is very light on relative to other areas of the technology sector. I'm Andrew Coppin, the president of the Australian Agri-Tech Association, uh, or Oz Agri-Tech. The association is the commercial voice um, of the Australian, Australian um, Agri-Tech ecosystem. Aaron Edmonds, uh, Managing Director, Netafim Australia, New Zealand. Digital farming or digital agriculture is, is the next frontier. Uh, it's it's revolutionising uh, agriculture as we know it from a productivity perspective. We've really got a, a global imperative to feed a few billion more people uh, by 2050, which unfortunately is not very far away. Um, so as while well, other areas of technology may come and go with um, inflation and consumer trends, the imperative to feed the world is not one that we can ignore or put down just because economic times get harder or circumstances change. We had a session uh, a couple of years ago to be very defined on what sustainability, one, means to us and two, means to our customers. So what it means to us is uh, innovation. We need to continually innovate. There's many different ways where it can impact um, our um, economy both from uh, helping farmers be more productive and profitable with their time and their limited resources. And that, that can come in a variety of guises. It could come through robotics. It could come through growing better plants or animals. It could come through nurturing soil better, um, or it could be supply chains um, impacts and things that happen between when the product leaves the farm and gets to its ultimate destination. There's a lot of smart people doing a lot of smart things. Uh, a lot of startups right around the world uh, looking at uh, different sensor technology, different imagery technology, um, some leaf sensors, some trunk sensors, some soil moisture sensors. There's lots of things happening. And increasingly a lot of those things are also revolving around um, a climate a across how we can run more efficient farming operations and more sustainable and resilient farming operations without producing more carbon. The production output increases and the reduction in water use and fertiliser use, et cetera, et cetera, uh, more than balance out and it's a, it's a profitable way forward. A, a plethora of companies that are working on how to make farmers' lives more efficient and use their time more wisely because um, I've never met a farmer with time on their hands. I think Aussie farmers are, have been, um, you know, a, very willing to, to consider new and other technologies that will help run their business. Um, and agri-techs need to do a better job of ensuring that they help the farmers understand the true ROI of what they're doing. This is uh, a potentially a $40 billion a year enterprise for Australia. Uh, we think that um, it's already well on the way to making very material contribution to Australia's um, internal produce and that we should be exporting um, over $20 billion worth of technology a year into the world market, which at the moment is, is about a $700 billion a year market um, in um, agri-tech goods and services sold. Um, so a huge opportunity for Australia to become a world leader in agri-tech exists, but we need investment, we need policy, and we need belief that um, Australian agri-tech can and will be the best in the world. <laughs>